this might be the ultimate, ultimate 11, to be honest, Ooh. Sam. <laughs> I, I do think he'll he'll go on to be Chelsea's greatest ever right back. You're just dropping names uh, here. Well, I can't help it who I've played with. <laughs> Even when he wouldn't be having his best games, he could win your games off the back of the relentlessness. Well, that is one serious team. So it's time for another Ultimate Eleven, and Sam and I are joined by Jody Morris today, and it's going to be his Ultimate Eleven of players that he has played with or coached. So I feel like this might be the ultimate, ultimate 11, to be honest, Ooh. Sam. <laughs> it must have been. I'll tell you what, I've never known anybody writing 11 down this quick. He knew. Jordy. Everybody else like goes, oh, well. I don't it's because half the time they're struggling, he's aren't got, they? Well, he's got so many to choose from as yeah. well. It's not as if it's an easy task, that like you mean. I've just... <gasps> <laughs> are, you are you having a change? Yeah, you know what? Because he has to put James in there. Yeah, yeah he yeah. just said it. He yeah. just said it, right. Okay, yeah. so let's start at the back then. Tell us who your ultimate keeper would be. Um, it would be Carlo Cudicini. Um, He wasn't one of the ones that when he came to the club, but he was bought as a backup goalkeeper to Ed Degoy, I think it was at the time. And um, when he got into his... Well, when he got his chance in the first team, he was just unbelievable. And in be fair, before he got his chance in training, we'd be like, he's the best shot stopper I'd seen. Um, I haven't played with that many top goalkeepers, to be fair. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Carlo Cudicini, for me, got into Premier League Team of the Year twice, in a, two times in a row or something. So I was like, yeah, it's got to be him. Okay. And then are you going for a back four? I am. Okay. Just to, uh, yeah, get a couple in. I, like Sam said, I did <laughs> I did rush it a little bit. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it looks phenomenal, so tell us. Yeah, so Reese James at right back. Yeah. Um, from the coaching side of stuff, I, I do think he'll, he'll go on to be Chelsea's greatest ever right back. We'll have to play a few more games to maybe achieve that. Yeah. It was a close one between him and William Gallas because I felt he was an underrated player at uh, Chelsea. And I saw that Jose put him in his all-time 11 the other day. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, it's not a bad one. Good um, but yeah, Reese James right back. Uh, Rio, centre-half, played with him at under-21 level. Um, for me, he's a shoe in for the all-time 11 Premier League centre-halves. His teammate, John Terry, um, speaks for itself. Like I said, I think they're the two best to have played in, in our leagues. Uh, Left-back, Ashley Cole, coached him at Derby. <laughs> So he's hey. not. So he's not one that I played, and I, I'm not picking him for his his derby levels of performance because uh, that was that was at the, that was at the back end of his career. Yeah. But legs are gonna be. Eh? What what he'd uh, what he done at Arsenal and Chelsea for me is when we were talking oh, about world class players that England had, he certainly came on, under that bracket. I felt and performed in big tournaments. Okay, so that's your back four. Yeah, Sam good. Very good, you, yeah. A defense that you would be happy with. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, so let's move forward. So in holding midfield, I, I picked N'Golo Kante, even though I wished he'd have played for us a bit more um, and he never picked up as many injuries. But for me, just uh, working with him and seeing the, the type of player that he was, that when he was on song, he was he was like having three players on the pitch. Conor Gallagher, wasn't he? Kai, he's can better. Do, yeah, I mean, he's... Like I said, N'Golo's played it, won World Cups. And I think when Chelsea won the league under um, Antonio Conte, I, f I felt he was unbelievable. When he won it at Leicester, I thought it was unbelievable. Yeah. So having coached him, I, like he, I, and again, I, I do think he's a truly world-class player. Yeah. Um, Lamps, I've world mentioned. World-class. World class. Yeah. yeah. Lamps, uh, of course. I've said before, he's... There's no one better than him that scoring goals from midfield. Um, even when he wouldn't be having his best games, he could win your games off the back of the relentlessness that he would run in to the box, arrive, great finisher. And uh, I think he was slightly underrated as a as a player tactically as well. I think he was he was very good. Um, next to him in midfield, because we're playing the diamond, so I can get certain players in. <laughs> uh, Rude Hullet played with him as a 17-year-old <gasps> at Chelsea. So Wow, oh, you were 17? Rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a lad he was. Um, wow. Yeah, so again, back end of his career, but he was still playing in midfield and uh, I, I grew up watching AC Milan and um, seeing what they'd done to teams all over Europe and Serie A and for me, he was, again, when we're talking world-class players, I think that's three world-class midfielders I've picked. Three world-class midfielders, Sam? I agree. But wow. top of the diamond... Gianfranco Zola. Oh, are you just dropping names yeah, here? Well, I can't help it who I've played with. <laughs> um, yeah, again, uh, 
he was one of the players that were pivotal at Chelsea going on to the next level. Uh, it was a huge signing when uh, Rude managed to get him Top over of the, the line. Premier League, this team, and if it played today, yeah. Uh. But but technically, he was absolutely outstanding. And um, if you could get him on the ball, he had an opportunity to make stuff happen. Wow! So nice midfield diamond. I'd okay, say. so you've got your back four, and you've got a diamond. So you, then you've got two up front. Yeah. So I'll go. Michael Owen, again, another one with the younger in England age groups. Um, but I feel I have to pick him because around those times that we were playing, um, he was tearing up the Premier League. And people do forget, although I say the levels in his career came down quite quickly because of injuries, that the way he burst on the scene and people forget that he won a Ballon d'Or. Um, outstanding, outstanding striker. Scored goals. Um, but I'm certainly picking him for the early part of his career. There was a big, big debate on who was the best Robbie Fowler or Michael Owen. Ooh, Did you see that? Where wow. the balls come on? Yeah. So, uh, I'm the <laughs> Did they? I think it was a good answer from <laughs> Michael. Was, though, yeah, yeah, it, it was, went yeah. well. Maybe uh, ask uh, the England manager yeah, who was yeah. picking the team and yeah. like the Liverpool manager who were picking the team, <laughs> so, which I think is fair. I think it's fair. But yeah. listen, you, strikers like to back themselves, don't they? Definitely. Um, and my other striker, it was close one out of him and Mark Hughes, but I want to go with Gianluca Vialli just because I think the all-round influence that he had, um, not just on the players, but then I know this he's is no going slightly off piece. He? No, no. Sadly. Um, but as a manager, he was huge for me and probably my favourite manager that I ever played for. So um, as far as teaching... Being someone who's teaching while they're on the pitch and and educating players with his voice and his knowledge, he was he was outstanding. So, I think he'd complement Michael Owen very well next to him. Wow. Okay. Could Cheney and then James Ferdinand, Terry, Ashley Cole, Kante, Hullet, Lampard, Zola, Viali, and Owen? I mean, that's going to win there. everything, Sam. I've got everything. Yeah. Is there any chink in that team? No. I don't, well, I don't know about the goalie. Maybe. Fair comment. Maybe. Fair well, comment. But obviously, that I did, I, in, in, it's, it's only a distant memory for me, like with him, you know what I mean? No, but, but other than that, not not really, no. no every, everywhere is... Yeah. Um, I, mean, I was just listening to Mark Noble the other day about um, him and Scott Parker. asked asked him to register himself and come and play for West Ham when he was manager there because he was that good in training. <laughs> Really? That's how good he was, yeah. yeah then, but yeah. the pair of them said, Gaffer, why don't you just play? About Zola? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, just come and get your boots on and come and play again. Well, I used to feel, think like that about Glenn Hoddle. Uh, he gave me my debut at Chelsea, but I used to think every day in training, you're the best. You're the best player every day in training. <laughs> how are you not still playing? Like, he was out, outstanding. But I, I do, I think when you get some of them real special players, they... They continue to have it for many years after they're actually finished because they were just so good. Well, the only reason we don't do it is because we can't run anymore. Our our knowledge, our experience, and our talent it grows year by year. But then all of a sudden, when the legs the legs slow down, you you try and carry on for as long as you can. But ultimately, that what either that or injury gets you in yeah. the end. Yeah, sadly. Well, that is one serious team. Joe Very Price's serious. All-time. I originally one of the best. One of the best we've had, I think. I think it's the ultimate, ultimate. I'd love to know what everybody else thinks. Is it the ultimate, ultimate 11 that we've had? I think it's the ultimate, ultimate. Very good. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.